in America. Um, today, I want to begin with because the last time, and, and I ask for forgiveness, from the last time I was uh, doing the presentation, the screen was not shown when I uh, covered the hermetic people. So if you bear with me with those that was in tune with us last time, I will go over the hermetic history of the hermetic people. Before then, I want to first talk about the first person of color um, that we, we hear about in the Bible or in the Quran. We know him in the Bible as Eno, and the Quran is Idris, the Ethiopian. This is before they was called Hamitic people. Uh, Idris was the son uh, of Cain, grandson Adam. Uh, from Idris came um, the concept uh, of math, of writing, of uh, 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 arithmetic, uh, uh, education. Also from Idris, uh, one of his sons, uh, his son Idrad, he had a son Nehujo. Nehujo had a son Methusalem. Methusalem um, was the father of Latimus. Latimus was the father of Noah. Um, this is in the beginning. So with the concept of Hamedic uh, came about uh, with the children of uh, Noah. There's reports that Noah had three sons. One was Shem, one was one was Jacob uh, 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 um, Fab, and another one was, was Ham. And Ham is where um, the African or the people of color for the come from. Ham is where they had uh, four sons, Cush, uh, Mishra, Foot, and Canaan. Uh, Cush's sons was Nimrod, Seba, uh, Havilah, Sabbath, Rachma, uh, and so forth. Nimrod, um, uh, he went. He had a king that went from Babel uh, and covered many areas. Uh, Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia uh, Misrad, uh was in more in the Egypt area, and these are some of uh, his sons. And then you had the sons of Canaan, uh, uh, who one one of them was Jesubis. Uh, and they are the people where Jerusalem got its name from. Uh, uh, um, and these are some of his other descendants and the Gaza. Now, who you don't see the uh, children listed up is the children of Foot. You don't see uh, uh, his, the, his children uh, being listed. So what you have here is a map. This map in, in the green is the children of Jacobat, which you see the Europeans. Then you see Akhenazi as well. Uh, here you got Shem is in that purple. You see the descendants of Shem, Elam, Asherah, all up in here. But then you have the descendants, some of the descendants of Ham, who you have met it in, 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 in Asia. Uh, you got Nimrod, you got Havilah, Dedan, Sheba, Rama, uh, Dedan, uh, and Canaan. So, and so you see the this is where that concept of ham, hamedic Asiatic comes in at. Then you got then you got uh, them coming down into Kush and the Ethiopia, uh, Mistra, and all this area. You see you just put. Now you see this pH also in many uh, ways they, they replaces the F uh, in the writing. So you will see Fula of Futon. So this is where you see some of these areas. You, you also see an uh, intersection of, of the diversity. Uh, Jacob Faf children married in, uh, amongst the Shem and the, and the Semitic and the Hamitic. And this is where you see these, this intertwine going on, all up in here. And this is all, all your different areas, all in Arabia, all in Africa. You see the children, the emergence of the children of Ham and Shem. Um, and you, you see this emergence also in the story of Abraham when we come um, to the story of Abraham, that emergence of uh, uh, the Semitic and the Hamitic people. And here you got the land of the Kush. You know, once again, these are Hamitic people, your, your people of color, your Babylons, Mesopotamia, Yemen, Southeast Arabia, Southwest Arabia, Ethiopia, there was known as Kushanites, Akhenans, Babylonians, Assyrians, Sumerians. Uh, Ethiopians, Abyssinians, Zanga, Hagarets. Hagarets is, are like the names uh, uh, from descendants from Hagar, uh, Zanjins, Benja, 
your Moors, your Nubians, your Negroes, and Blacks. These are some just some of the names that was called. The land of Canaan, you know, which which we see Gaza and, and present day a uh, uh, part of Israel. You see the your Phoenicians, your Canaanites, all these your Hamitic, your your Jebusites, your Hatis, your Marites. All of these are your Hamitic people, descendants of your Hamitic, all up in this area. Okay, and then you got uh, Abraham, who uh, who was a, a, a descendant of Shem. Uh, Shem's great grandson Eber had two children: Pegleg, Adnan. Then in the Arab uh, culture, they call him Adnan, and the other one was Koton, which was Koton. And you saw that in the other map uh, of the Koton uh, uh, in the Arabian area. Uh, Pegleg had a son Reu, and his son had a son Surah. Surah had a son Nah Nahor. Nahor um, had some children, uh, Tyran, who had three sons, Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Haran was the father of Lut. Uh, Abraham had three wives. You know, I say wives, you know, people say slaves or concubines, uh, but this was the prophet of God, so he had to give these people dignity, he gave him dignity. Uh, you had Sarah, who was also a Semitic, so, uh, and they had that ch child of Isaac. Um, but then you have Hagar, Abraham and Hagar, he had a, 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 a child, Ishmael. Uh, and then with Ishmael, you had, uh, now here, here is the area I want to point out. I'm going to come back. You see Hagarets right here. You see Ishmael. You see Kendar. All of these are your Hamedic, your, your Africans, or your Hamedic people in this area. And this yellow, all this little yellow area is showing you where the Hamedic people are. Besides in Africa, in the emergence of them and also being in, in Arabia. Here is the route. This is the area where uh, uh, Ibrahim was born, Ur, and then in his travels, traveled all through the Hermetic area. This is what, and this is what parts of the area where uh, the Hagarets were, or Hagar come up out of. So you have, you know, not, you know, you not only have the, your, your, your hermetic people, but you have the uh, the Semitic people merging as well. Here you got the, with the family of uh, Abraham, you got, and, and Hagar, um, it, they had the son, one son, Ishmael. Ishmael had 12 children. I, I showed you this all in the map, Kedar, uh, and, and the area where he was. Uh, Abel, Abel, these are some of his other uh, descendants. Tima, uh, you'll, you'll hear reports about them. These are some the descendants of Ishmael. Then Abraham, third wife, Katara. You could look in the Bible, Katara. And they had six children. So now this is eight children that they identified. Um, and a couple of them, he did have a couple of um, females. This Menon, you got Menon, and then you got Menai, and you got Shuei. Shuaib is what we call in the Bible Jethro. Uh, these are the people and, and the Mennonites who, who are the people that uh, uh, Moses married amongst. Then I just want to mention some of the uh, pre-Islamic uh, African uh, or Hermetic people in, in history. Christian Rishanton in the whole tap. Hassan pardon me. And she was a great queen. You got Candace. You got Nefertiti, you got Lukman, the Queen of Sheba. These are just some of the names, some of the personalities. Esau, Esau Fables, Lukman, Hannibal, uh, Cleopatra, Abram, who was the uh, viceroy, uh, the Negus of uh, uh, Abyssinia, who on um, the year of the elephant was the leader of those that was trying to raid uh, uh, Medina at the time. Uh, uh, Abdul um, Mutalib. Ibn Hashim, who is the uh, Prophet Muhammad's Islam uncle, or was his grandfather, pardon me. You got Anti Ibn Sadat. These are just some of the African uh, personalities uh, during the Islamic period in time. Once again, these are just maps showing you the areas of Hamitic influence and people where they live, as well as the other tribes. These are some of the famous people during Af uh, uh, African heritage during Prophet Muhammad's time. Umi Amin, who was the African girl who took Prophet Muhammad Islam to his grandfather. Balaa ibn Rabah al Hashbi, the first Muwet and the finance minister, the giver of Muslim charity. 
uh, Ali ibn Abu Talib, the cousin of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Usama uh, bin Said, uh, Abu Mari Ajasa, uh, Al Bash Bashir. Matter of fact, this half Bashri are a group of people that were during the year of the elephant are people that was captured and enslaved during that period of that time. These are just some of the others that they talk about. Now I want to go to Bilal ibn Rabah because as we're going to come into um, African American history of Muslims in America, we're going to see the same names, some of the same personalities, some of the same things. During Prophet Muhammad time, over um, 1400 years ago, there was one of his companions, his name was Bilal. And uh, there was, he was the first one went in the first call of the prayer. He was also the first uh, giver of sakat, giver of community security, uh, uh, charity, pardon me. Uh, and then one day, then one of the extensions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, they heard the footsteps of Bilal in paradise of heaven of him. And so he asked Bilal, he said, Bilal, what, what are you doing special, man, that you, you I can hear your footsteps ahead of mine. And Bilal said, I'm not doing nothing but making wudu and praying. Uh, and, 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 but it shows you that he was a prayer, also a person that prayed and, and, and made wudu. Another thing about Bilal, and you'll see some of the same similarities into the African-American uh, mindset, even today, is that when after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had passed, uh, he was pressed to make uh, Bayah uh, uh, take allegiance to the leadership of uh, uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq, and, and he refused to. And he said that he, he questioned Abu Bakr. He said, "Look, did you free me to be a slave to you or a slave to Allah?" Uh, uh, um, now he still supported the community, went and fought many battles uh, and everything, but just taking that allegiance. You know that relationship that the human being has is with Allah, and found the example of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is one thing that we have to be uh, mindful of. Another coming towards the end of this, another uh, there's a couple other great personalities that are found in, in the history of African American heritage. There's one guy, and he was an author um, over 1,200 years ago. Abu Uthman Amir bin Bahar Al Fukarmi Al Bashiri Al Jazi. Brother Al Jazi wrote over uh, 120 books. And one of his books, um, he describes or addressed what he saw in the black race um, about black folks. He said that blacks were very generous. They had a natural gift for rheumatic dancing, the best singers. They expressed themselves in a lively manner, physically stronger. They're always happy, smiling, and optimistic. Now the African uh, or hermetic person you find in, in Islamic history or in early history is General Tariq Ibn Zaid. Uh, when he crossed into Spain, he helped conquer the Spanish uh, uh, continent for the Muslims. Um, and when he conquered it, it, he's known as what they call the Rock of Gibraltar. It's really named after him and in honor of him. Now we'll begin with the story of Muslims in the, the 1800s history in, into America. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Here, this here is um, what they call, call court records. Where that when Africans um, were freed, they would have to go to court uh, every so often to get a description of themselves. And um, while I was in Virginia, um, looking at my my family records, because um, many of my family was uh, given their freedom. This is one of the descendants. This is Betty Freeman, she was aged about thirty years old, five feet five inches, five and a half inches high. Uh, 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 of yellow complexion. But as I noticed, I came down, I saw this guy named Thomas Hawk, H-A-Q-Q, -Q, age 40 years, 45 years old. Uh, you have 40 years of five feet, one inches height and a light complexion. So, and and Hawk in, in, in Arabic means truth. So that made me start thinking about Sojourner Truth, but you could clearly see that this was a Muslim or person with an Islamic name. Uh, and, and, and further down in that same document, and this is done in December, eight, December the 22nd, 1824. This is my earliest ancestor that I was able to find that was free. His name is Isaac Freeman, a free man of color. Um, he came into his office, on, on, they recorded on that day, said that Isaac was dark complexion, 36 years old, five feet, seven and a half inches height. So they measured the height. He had a knot on his 
on the end of his uh, fourth finger on the right hand and was born free. So he let you know that Isaac was born free. Then we move also in the 1800s, we started seeing, uh, finding Muslim personalities starting to appear in, in American uh, history, books, uh, and, and American stories. One such personality is Yarl Mahmoud. Um, you'll find that in, in some of the, the, the writings, they say Mahmoud, they spell it Mahmoud. Uh, and in the census record, and here they spelled it Mahmoud. M A M A R M O O D. And this is how we spelled it with it. There's two paintings that is done about Yarrow. This one hangs in uh, Georgetown Public Library in, in Washington, D.C. This one hangs in Philadelphia Historical Society. There's very few paintings of African American males um, during this period and this time. And this painting here was painted by a very famous uh, painter, uh, Charles Wilson Peel. Who, uh, painted many famous personalities as well as painters. There's stories that Yarrow owned property uh, known as a, a great swimmer and, and had a hauling business and was an investor in, in, in the Georgetown area. Also in the 1800s, you find uh, reports of the first Muslim communities uh, existed in America. And in Georgia, uh, you find these, these areas. Uh, one of the leaders of, of the first known Muslim community who I, and who I believe is the first Imam is Bin Ali Muhammad out of Sapo Island. In the War of 1812, he told his slave master, uh, he identified 80 men as being Muslim who were of his true faith of, of believers they could depend on to help defend this island. Uh, and then by 1826, he left this book, what they call a Rasala, which is really this Rasala means a letter. Well, these are notes instructing the community how to maintain um, praying, best time to pray, um, some of the best things to say in the prayer, which is dhikr and remember Allah, remember God, uh, Ramadan, and being charitable. These are some of the things in the stories that he left uh, amongst them in American history that uh, Peter Rabbit, Baba Rabbit, story by uh, Charles uh, Chancellor Harris. Uncle Ramos' stories was uh, based upon Bilal's son's uh, life, this story. Um, here on this island is what some of the first houses that they built out of concrete. Uh, they, they built out of sand, seashells, and limestones. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, during Prophet Muhammad's time, Saturday the Sun, we had the story about Bilal Ibn Rabab uh, during Prophet Muhammad's time. Well, in America, we didn't have um, not only one Bilal, we had two Bilal as Muslim leaders. Both of them was like 15 uh, miles in between each other. Uh, in between those two Bilal is where I found this first tombstone with the one finger on it, with the Tahid on it. And we find in, in Islamic history, the story about Bilal when he converted to Islam, the slave master torturing him, trying to uh, get him out of the belief in God, oneness of God. And Bilal said, a hot, a hot, a one God, one God, when he couldn't say that no more, he put up the one finger just like in American sports. Uh, when the team win, they say the number one, they put on that big glove and say, we're number one, we're number one. Well, this is what they did on many of these tombstones that we found from Florida, all the way up to Canada, out west to Kansas. These are some of the rooms of the, the houses that they built out of sand, seashells, and limestones. These are some of the rooms that still exist in what they call the area of chocolate um, town. This is his book. This book is in uh, University of Georgia today in Athens. Uh, it's a very spiritual and motivating book. This here is the other Bilal. Uh, this is Sally Bilali. Uh, he was plantation manager over 450 people on St. Simon Island. Uh, Jim Brown comes from this area. Um, another unique thing about this uh, area is that that brother um, Abadu who this was uh, murdered uh, uh, last year or so in the in Georgia area, uh, coastal Georgia was right here in the St. Simon area where he come from. And Sali Ben Ali, he's one of his descendants. And in 1940, maintained the name Ben Ali, that they brought the plantation, parts of the plantation, they call it the Ben Ali Sullivan Estate. So they maintained that name Ben Ali throughout, and this was in the 1941. There's report that there was no Europeans, and if you could look at the uh, reports and records, you don't see no Europeans in that area with that name Sullivan. 
if you put that it wasn't Sullivan, it's supposed to be Suleiman, is the name that they had. And, and one of the books that they uh, did about the people uh, in Drums and Shadows, they talk about remember uh, in the reports of family saying this would be this Akbar, this Akbar would be Allahu Akbar. Uh, remember the aunt saying Allahu Akbar and praying on the bay, you know. Uh, uh, they talked a lot of funny talk, which would have been Arabic. Um, and then to describe about Sarakat, the cake that they used to give the children for, for Sarakat, the, 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 the is for celebration. They made the rice cakes. Who made this more famous, more popular was Silva and Daouf in the book, Servants of Allah. She um, really pointed out the, uh, the, the ritual of making that Sarakat cake in there. Here, you uh, uh, talk about they used to wear a veil, a head like a veil, uh, and how they describe how they used to maintain covering themselves up. Here is also talking about um, using rice and doing wudu. There's so many stories that they said, they describe the word sadaka, which is charity. Here they talk about Friday was the day when she was home, a pray day, you know, call, um, her prayer day. So then now they're talking about Juma, remind you about Juma. I remember when I used to uh, be, ch ch uh, was a child and seeing my grandmother pray. Every morning at sunup, she'd kneel on the floor in, in her room and bow down on, a, bow down up her head. And it's hard to read the, the, the language, but you know, making prayer, bowing down. When she finished praying, she said, I mean, I mean, I mean. These are some of the reports uh, of their prayers, of uh, remembering. And this is in, in the early 1800s. Then this is like 20 years later. These are some of the uh, uh, descendants of the children. They're still giving them Islamic name. You see Tamir. You see Ishmael. This Barkis is probably Bakir, Amir. Barkis is probably uh, Bakir. Fatima, Adam. This Billy is probably Bilal. You see a Fatima. You see a Muhammad. It's felt this way, 17 years old. This Benna. We saw that tombstone earlier with the name Benna. Benna is daughter. We see another one, Bilali. You see Ishmael. You see Israel. You see Kofi the Fula. Then you got Billy, you got Abraham, you got Abraham, Raina, Sambo. These are just some of the names that they were still giving them. Here you got another Fatima, Mingo, uh, Elis, what they call Fatima. Here you got Amirta. This is the same name that uh, 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 Harry Tubman was born with, was given, Tawa. Here you got another Muhammad. He's 25 years old. Member, and then Jatafa, one of the Africans, and there's the Amirata. Again, uh, this Michael's probably Mikhail, Fatima, Akila, Suleiman. You, you could still see them giving these names. And they still had tra their tradition of wearing their scarves and wearing layers and their clothes. These are one of the houses of the Gullah people during that period of time. And this is one of the very unique ones. This is in uh, what they call Jacksonville, Florida. Here you see the brother uh, with a kufi on his head. And, and, and his clothes, you see the, 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 like an African design. These are once the Gullah people that lived in, in the Jacksonville, Florida area. Uh, and, and many African books, they talk about them wearing their prayer beads, which is called the juju beads or the dicker beads. And you see men in rap. You see many tombstones with that one finger done in many formats. And you see this all across the United States, as far as even going up into uh, Canada and Bermuda. This photograph that points out five of the women having their prayer beads and dicker beads on them. There's the more photographs of the Gullah people and the living and the, and the lifestyle, their heritage of making baskets out of seagrass. This is a home, what they call a Moorish home. 
This is in Jacksonville, Florida during the period of time. You can see the Islamic architect clearly in it. This here is a church in Savannah, Georgia, the first African Baptist church in Savannah, Georgia. All of its pews had this African or Jammy script written in it, going from right to left. This is one that we tilt down, you can see, going right to left. These are some that are tilt down, you can see going right to left, and the markings. Some of it's with the uh, Arabic, I'm using a Jammy script and African words. Now the Muslim personalities we find in the early 1800s uh, is a, a prince among slaves, Abdul Rahman. It's a very rich and beautiful story about Abdul Rahman. Um, as a young man, he grew up in his, his father's uh, uh, army, became a, a captain in one of the, uh, his armies and lost in one of the battles. But prior to um, joining the uh, army, I mean, his father took care of a European doctor uh, as a young man. The doctor got better. His name was Dr. Cox. Cox. He got better and went on about his ways. And Abraham went on about his ways. Grew up and fought in his father's uh, army. Got captured and wound up being enslaved. And he, the unique thing about uh, Abraham, a principal slave, is that uh, he comes from out of Timbuktu, deep within Africa, one of the scholarly uh, centers within Africa. And he left some early writings. Um, he was enslaved for, only f uh, for over 40 years and he got his freedom. And he wound up making it back to Africa. And one of his letters and one of his journeys, he wrote that my name is Abdul Rahman, son of Ibrahim. I was born in the city of Timbuktu. I lived there till I was five years old. I moved to the country Futajalo. I lived in the capital Timbu. I lived there till I was 25 years old and I was taken prisoner and then into one of the wars, then how he went up to the Gambia River and then how he wound up in Natchez, then how he wound up being sold. And he wrote this letter October uh, 10th, 1828. And this one is a house at, in Yale. This one is in Philadelphia. A lot of times they say this is the Lord's Prayer, but it's really the Fatiha, the opening chapter in the Holy Quran. And it's given salutations to the prophet and then it's telling you where the surah was revealed at. And so it goes more in depth about it. Uh, and this was written in December, 1828. This is after Abraham got his freedom and he went up and down the East Coast and as well and as well as went out into Cincinnati. Uh, while he was in the East Coast, he wound up going into the uh, old African meeting house up in Massachusetts. Uh, we met many of the early African scholars of that time. Another personality in American history as a Muslim personality is Ibrahim. He lived amongst the Cinema Indians who lived in Florida. The Cinema Indians um, was really a mixture of uh, African runaways, indigenous native Indians, and, and, and people of Islamic heritage. And they built a couple forts. They had one fort they called Fort Musa, and then they had one fort they called Fort Negro. And both of these forts was really what we would call gated communities today, where that they had people that were living well, they have farmland, they were being productive, self-sufficiency. Uh, President Andrew Jackson didn't like that, and he despised that, and he challenged that, and this is what helped produce what they call the Gullah Indian Wars, to push back and, and not to give us, us as African people hope and, and, and self-reliance and independence. So these are some of the uh, similar Indians that still lived in the bush uh, at the turn of the century in the 1900s. You still see them with, with the fezes and long garbs and, and to the bushes. This is one of the older of the tribe during that period of time. Then we're gonna to move to what um, we mentioned a little bit earlier, Harriet Tubman. And as I said, um, she was born with the name Aminata, which is really Amina. Uh, and you can see in many of Harriet Tubman's pictures, photographs, she's always have her, her hair wrapped. Uh, and it's reported that her, her parents were always fast on every Friday. As you saw the Africans in, 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 in the Georgia area saw Friday as the special day. Well, Harry Tubman's father and family um, saw Friday this special day, and they fast as well. 
and they were very devoted. When you look at some of um, Harry Tubman's comments, uh, her visions and her interpretations, she relied on God, she relied on inspiration, she relied on following God's guidance. Um, she was a, a strong believer in God and his, his inner communication. In her museum, you see that they have her um, hands cupped. Like I know in the nation of Islam, early years, they used to pray like that. And Muslims, when they do the dua, or make a little short prayer, um, they would do it with their hands like that in the dua. Um, so we can see uh, that in, in, in Islam, uh, presented through the doors of Elijah Muhammad, said that Muslims believed in freedom, justice, and equality. And Harry Tubman fought for freedom, justice, and equality. And she was a, a firm believer in God. She was a, 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 a woman of righteousness, a, a woman of belief. Now, another unique thing about that Eastern Shore area of, of the uh, Muslims and people that came from there, uh, I do want to stop and back up. Some of the uh, personalities that came from out of that Eastern Shore before Harry Tubman and then in the 1700s, you had Job Ibn Dujalo, uh, who was in the Kent County area. You had uh, Kunta Kente. You have Richard Allen. You have Franklin Douglas. Uh, a lot of uh, people to come from uh, the Eastern Shore area. Now, with the Eastern Shore, you see that the Africans, their early transition, uh, 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 and the Western world into Christianity was to, through the door of Methodists. You see that in uh, that Eastern Shore area, that there was Quakers and Methodists. Methodists and Quakers believe that there, that we all have the ability to have a relationship with God, that we have a human soul. So when many, many of these Africans that had belief, you know, Islamic beliefs or, or, or faith, ran into these people, they opened their arms up and, and related to them where that some of the first African-American churches in that area, they built them like this big mosque, mass church. You see the minarets, you see the Islamic architects in them. We had two doors, one for male, one for female. And um, this is the same pattern that the AME Zion churches still do. Uh, the church that I grew up in, in, in Connecticut, their front was like this. This is that same Islamic architect that you see all right here in the minaret all still right there, where that the Europeans at that time, they, they called it Gothic. They thought it was very unique, um, Gothic. But if you look at uh, uh, um, Africans, what they're going to, what the world they're going to know about anything Gothic coming out of Africa? They knew about Islam. Islam had penetrated for hundreds and hundreds of years in Africa. They had mass jets in Africa. So they knew these designs and their, their, uh, their perception. Now this one I found very unique, still in the Eastern Shore in the uh, East New Market area. This is a church that they obviously put in new windows. So these are square modern windows, still got the minaret. But here in this window right here, they built a design an Islamic architect and put it up in the window so that it could still exist. I doubt if they know what they, what they had here, but that is what, what they did. You also see in the 1850s, um, in census records, start seeing Muslim appearing in American census records. This is in 1850 in Ohio. You got a guy named Henry Allah coming from Ireland. You see it says Ireland. We found about at least five to seven census records with people coming from Ireland um, with Islamic names, Kate Islam and, and, and so forth. So when you go look up with Google, uh, shake Google, and tell you that uh, Muslim pirates conquered southern parts of Ireland in the 1600s, and many of them converted to being Muslim. This is where we, in that 1700 period, we talk, in 1500 period, we talking about uh, Sally uh, and Anthony Jameson, uh, who were uh, Europeans that was pirates and converted to Islam. There's another one in California in 1850. His name is Muhammad. He's 28 years old, coming from Arabia, living in America in the 1850s. In the 1850s, uh, there were at least eight people uh, living um, as free people um, that came directly from Africa. You know, we did not get our freedom until um, 1865. Uh, but here in the 1850s, you got people coming directly from Africa. This is one from Guinea. 
living in New Bern. Bernie Burka Fossil. Burka Fossil, you see this is an area that they was in, Katawaba. This Katawaba, North Carolina, the area that uh, some of my ancestors came up out. But then, this is letting you know, this is in the 1850s. In the 1860s, there was at least two people. Now we move into South Carolina. I took a look at some of the different places. In South Carolina, there was uh, at least 12 people. You know, very few may have Islamic names, but they, they told you where they came from, from Africa. Now in, in, in the South Carolina, you got one that said Gabon, but most of them just say Africa. Uh, you had a few that said Chad, but mostly Africa. This is in the 1860s, there was six, 19 people that was, you know, once enslaved, but now they're free. You see them some from Tunisia, Central Africa, Algeria, Mauritania, and some of the places where they said they came from, Mali, Sudan. And this is in Georgia. Now, Georgia, because they got developed that later on, you have more Africans or people that came from Africa that were still uh, going, living. This is in 1850. You had 35 people that was free people that said they came from Africa. You know, and, and you, you can see the list of them from Africa. And now, and, and in some parts, in some places, this one says South Africa. This one says Senegal. This one says Senegal. This one say Vi. This one says Nigeria. This one say Benin. This say Senegal, Central Africa, so not in Cameroon, Cameroon, uh, Central Africa, Senegal. So it's identifying some of the areas where they came from. So if you need these names, the, you know, the European uh, names, you can maybe trace your heritage uh, to your, your African ancestor. And some of them will even describe where they came from. This is Georgia in 1860. Now it decreases now to uh, about 17 of them. Um, and it, this, it don't describe as, as well as it did before, but you got some from Kenya, one from Sierra Leone, Libya, Liberia, and Angola, Sierra Leone, Egypt. About at least 17 of them that they described. Uh, um, here, the oldest one uh, in 1850 uh, or 1860 census was uh, Rosa Moss. Um, she was born in 1763, and she was living in Virginia. These are Virginians. In Virginia, in 1850 and 1860, there were 10 people um, um, that were born living there. It came from Africa. Another personality that we know during that time, uh, he lived in the Desmo Swamp area. In the Desmo Swamp area, North Carolina, they had they, were, they had free people living there for generations and had many different people as leaders. Uh, one of the known leaders of the 1860s, in 1850, 1860, uh, the Desmo Swamp area was Usman, or Osman. And this is the... Uh, a pencil drawing of, of Osman uh, being, uh, that they showed. Another Muslim personality, uh, and he wound up in, into the Caribbean. And his name is Ali. Just wanted to point out him. Another Muslim personality here, born in the, in the uh, United States in the North Carolina area, is uh, Omar Ibn Said. Omar Ibn Said, a uh, unique thing about Omar Ibn Said, they told us that we was Africans, we had no culture, no history, we couldn't read, we couldn't write. That's the line. Omar was a proof of it. Omar was a world traveler. He had made Hajj uh, before he even got captured. Um, and, and in America, um, he wrote his own autobiography. There's over 13 letters that he wrote um, describing his scholarship how he was educated, where he was educated, some of his teachers, everything. Um, he lived to be a, 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 a sage. Uh, one of the unique things about Omar is that um, he, he wrote his own story in Arabic. A friend of mine who was a Muslim, may Allah be pleased with him for giving his sins and something in paradise. Um, then we would know him as Derek Bird that owned this uh, book of Omar Ibn Said. Um, but he sold it down, it's, it, I believe it's at the Library of Congress. They also gave Omar a Bible, all in Arabic. 
This is at uh, Davidson College. And uh, Omar used to just tell stories and, uh, and, and educated the people. He lived like a sage. Uh, one of the stories that Omar wrote about was Yasin, uh, the Surah, uh, Surah of the Quran, to remind people uh, of the punishment that we're going to get for doing bad deeds uh, and how they was treating us as a people. Now, this here is a very unique family within themselves. This is the first family that we found free in the United States as Black people. This is 1850 census in Frederick Merlin. This is free people. This is Black with the name Muhammad. And they spelled the name M-A-H-A-M-M-E-T-T. -T. Sometimes they spelled the M-I-T-T. Uh, this is the tombstone of Jeremiah Muhammad, the grandson, who was born in 1865, died 1923. For 100 plus years, they maintained this with Muhammad. These are some of his children. Now, here you see the, the difference in the shade of this tombstone. Uh, this country must use a, 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 a Coca-Cola. Uh, this is the acid, clean the acid off. So this is what it does to our stomach. But some of the, the descendants wound up moving to Nebraska. Another one of the descendants wound up moving uh, to uh, Baltimore. They became known as the Arab, the vendors uh, in the Baltimore area. And one of them moved out to uh, Nebraska and they had a cake mix, an uh, advertisement cake mix called Omar Cake Mix. This is Muhammad's family. One of the uh, descendants uh, also lived in uh, Washington, D.C. and was a teacher. Um, this Muhammad family, we uh, up at least to 2000, uh, there was a, still a, a family with that name, came that name Muhammad. Uh, we, was able, we was not able to interview them, but we uh, just missed them by a few days um, before they moved out to, uh, from the house that we found that they had last lived in. This here uh, is a unique town. The first house that was built in the United States with an Islamic architect was built in my hometown that I was born in. Um, Bridgeport, Connecticut. And it was built and designed by P.T. Barnum of the Barnum Bella Circus. This here is the old skating room that we used to uh, go skating in. I didn't, but my brothers and them did. Uh, this here is the P.T. Barnum Museum. You still see the Islamic dome and the minaret style design uh, in that building today, uh, which is the house of his museum. In the Civil War, we found at least 292 people that had Islamic names that fought in the uh, Civil War. From all parts of the United States, from New Hampshire to Pennsylvania to Illinois, you see them all listed. John Amin, William Amin, Benjamin Allah, Peter Ali, Frederick Hamin, Joseph Hamin, Albert Hassan, Amos Hassan, Max Hassan, who was an African-American. Ewell Hassan would have, oh, who was also African-American. Adele Muhammad. Uh, El Muhammad could be loot. Now this this El Muhammad, he fought for the Confederate. You had at least three of them fought for the Confederate. J. N. Mahmoud fought for the Confederate. You got this ha ha Hammond Hassan who fought for the Confederate. So these are just some of the soldiers that are listed. You got some Usmans and some Rahmans that are listed all throughout. This is uh, one of the personalities, Muhammad Ibn Said. Uh, this is the book about, uh, one of the original books about his life and his story, uh, how he was brought here, how he came here as a free man. And he wound up being uh, in the military and as well as being an educator. Uh, this is his military record, Nicholas Said, you know, dark, uh, eyes black, hair black. Uh, this is where you saying there was, this one says he was born in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, but we know that he came up out of Africa, uh, the Nigerian Chad area. Uh, here's another one, Max Hassan, United States Colored Tree. Uh, this is his records. He said he was born in Africa. He worked as a porter. Uh, Max Hassan wound up going to New York and uh, living into New York. Now, these are some of the uh, records of Nicholas Saeed. You see it spelled a little different, but Nicholas Saeed. Uh, Roma, which is Burma, uh, Africa, is where he's saying he was born. His father's birthplace, Nangara, Africa, Mojo, Africa, his mother's birthplace. So now it gives you a little bit more scripture. And he was like 40 years old. 
Uh, he came from out of Liverpool. Uh, he arrived here in, in 1860. I'll give you information about his birth date. He, he was about 23 years old. So you, you, he was released here in, for 17 years. You can see this uh, in Civil War records. He was here three years before he uh, um, came into the Civil War records, got joined the Civil War. Um, this is, uh, matter of fact, this one, they said Maximilian uh, Hassan. This is his transcript, his health records. Uh, this is not, not the record of Max Hassan, record of inmates, okay, as in the hospital. And this is a census record uh, being in New York City. This here uh, is another unique story of uh, a Muslim or Islam in the Civil War. This is a crime that was saved during the Civil War when the Union troops went down to uh, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. They uh, went to burn down the town and they went to go burn the library and the, li one of the library ran and said, can we save some books? Can we save some books? And he said, no, we saved one book. And that one book that he ran and saved is this Quran. This Quran is still housed in, in the University of Alabama, Tuscaloosa. It says the only book saved from the university library building, which was destroyed by fire during the Civil War. It is a George Sells translation, but it's the only Quran uh, book that was saved. Now, this here is another very unique story. Soldiers wearing, wearing the Zobaya uh, uniforms. These are uniforms that the uh, Muslims wore, the Algerian Muslims wore. And some of these guys was Muslim immigrants as well. Uh, these are the, uh, this is a uh, painting photograph of them winning the, a battle in Fredericksburg, uh, Virginia. And there's many of them, many of them are around early America that fought. And there's many stories, you, if you go look up the uh, Azul, I might not be pronouncing it right, Zahu Av, you know, uh, I'm not sure, but th this is, there's many paintings. Uh, the first time I saw this was in, in, in Barbados. They had the changing of the guards. The changing of the guards, they got these Algerian uniforms, the Moroccan uniforms. This is in the library or the museum in, 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 in Fredericksburg. Telling you the story of the pirate that, uh, that wore it and the Zoyers. This is one of the photographs of the real one. Some of these are the Muslim immigrants. You see the story everywhere. You know, so we have, and someone got their citizenship for fighting in some of these battles. Here's one, here's a, a census records in the 1880s. This is in Wyoming. This is a guy named B.A. Muhammad. He's a private, he's a soldier coming directly from Africa. Mama and everybody else was from Africa. And he's out in Rawlings, okay, you know, out in Wyoming. Way out, way out, Wyoming. Here's another one. This is in Massachusetts. This is in 1870s. He is one to say his name is Bernard Muhammad. And they listed him as black. Only one living in the white area. This is him as black, as a labor coming from Turkey. Then you got in the 1870s, you, you got people in, in, North, in, in North Carolina, there's 33 of them. They'd be saying that they was born uh, from Africa. Mingo Sidus, now that we saw Sidus, this is probably uh, Said, and he's from Afghanistan. Here they say they're from Africa. That one says Afghanistan. Here you got a shawl and you got a coffee. Here you got people that saying they're from uh, Upper Guinea. And this is from the Georgia census record. Here you got Upper Guinea, Guinea. This ba Baker, Bakir, Algiers. You see them all, they're, they're all listed. John Baker again, Tyson, these are my people. This is my family people, Ramsey. This is all that's just Georgia. 
This is Sali Bilali, Bilali uh, uh, Muhammad, and all their descendants with a lot of the heavy Gullah people was brought to, uh, to do rice, indigo, and cotton. This is my ancestor right here, Clara Higginbottom, came directly from Africa. This is in the 1870 census. Now in the 1870 census, now you see how many of them they got? 318. 318. Most of them was people that were enslaved and got their freedom after that. South Carolina in 1870s. Here you got 215. 18 South Carolina, 1880. Now you got 368. So look, you can see the growth. This Pickney. This Pickney is a very popular name that many of us were enslaved by. But see, now they're not telling us uh, what part of Africa. They're saying being general. Africa. And now you can see the volume. You don't see the volume in Virginia as much as you see in the, um, in the Georgia and the South Carolina and North Carolina area. You can see in the Georgia, 124. And your numbers are dropping. This is in the 1880s. In Virginia, 1880s. You got 11. And this is that Sambo Swift with that tombstone with the one finger. This is this census record. This Butler uh, Island. Uh, this Butler was part of, he was part of this Pierce Butler plantation. If you ever watched uh, uh, um, one of American stories about the Fanny Kimball story of this European out of uh, Philadelphia marrying this plantation owner, uh, Pierce Butler. Sambo Swift was part of that Pierce Butler plantation story. You can see uh, Butler's Island. For me to get to my father's uh, house or the, my father's area, we had to drive through, uh, if it was on Route 17, through a Butler's Island and past the Rice House and the plantation fields uh, where Sambo Swift and them uh, worked at. And this is, you see his wife, Molly Swift. There was also, I guess he had a son, Sambo. He was born in 1840. This other Sambo was born in 1825. Another story in American history is his brother Hajali, nicknamed Hajali. Um, in America, this would they put the tombstone and they nicknamed him Hajali. In America, Muslims were not uh, cowboys; they was camel boys. Uh, in, uh, America uh, went around the Muslim world. They brought over seventy-five camels uh, back here, all different type of camels to see what type of camels will be able to go out west to explore uh, and go through the desert and to make it out west. And in that process, they brought three Muslims um, back with them. One was named Haj Ali, one was named, they called him George, but another one they called George the Great, and another one that uh, became known as August Muhammad. Um, and there's a movie, uh, what they call the, out, the Southwestern Trail, a cowboy picture. Uh, and it has three actors dressed in Islamic garbs calling, um, saying, Haj Ali, come on. Uh, I'm getting up from prayer. And what you saw was his tombstone with a pyramid and a camel on top. These are other tombstones that we find all across the United States. This is that Sambo Swift, that census record that I talked about. This is that one finger that we found. This is a tombstone. This says Osman Rockman, R-O-C-K-M-A-N, which we know Rockman, R-A-H-A-M-A-N. These are, and this is found in Connecticut. These are the tombstones we found in Connecticut with the Tahi with the one finger, the belief in one God. In, in, in American history or, or in historical research documents that I found years ago, what they said about tombstones with the one finger, they say they, they believe it uh, means pointing up to heaven. What, Sambo Swift was the first one we found. And, and, and his name is Sambo, and we believe in the oneness of God. Now, when I found these tombstones from all these places with these African uh, had Muslim heritage, then we wound up going to this town called Mecca, Indiana, in Muhammad, Illinois. And in Mecca, Indiana, where we found these tombstones written in Arabic. You know, this is done in the Ottoman script, which was demolished by uh, Turk 
uh, in the 20s. Uh, this would be the uh, tombstone we found in Arabic. We also found in there tombstones with the one finger in that town, in, 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 these, uh, in this cemetery. These are tombstones we found up in Maine. This is over 114 years ago. He died in 1906. It's a Turkish man, a Dov Hassan, a Muslim man. Here you got uh, Qasim Sali. You see this Belowski. You see that Belal. But you know he comes from that region, uh, uh, Eastern European, so you see Belowski. This here is a map of towns where that this group uh, called the Ben Ishmael tribe developed a town called Morocco, Illinois. Muhammad, Illinois, and Mecca, Indiana. And then there's reports they would go to uh, Annapolis and then, and then go back. And then they got pushed out of Annapolis and they wound up going into uh, 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 Detroit and Chicago area. There's reports that these are the first group of people that they try to use genetics. It was called the unwanted people. This is where Hitler got his ideas to use genetics to change people. Uh, is from this group of people. Uh, and they, were, they, they became what they called the Ben Ishmael tribe. Um, come, and the, many of the groups were in Kentucky and then into the Plains uh, area. There's one of the towns that they helped establish, Mecca, Indiana, which has a, a covered bridge that was established in 1878 called the Mecca Bridge. It's one of the few covered bridges that are left. There's two cemeteries there. One is a family cemetery called the uh, Hickson Cemetery. Family cemetery, we found these tombs in Arabic and with the Taheed on it, as well as the Arabia Cemetery. We found tombstones with the one finger on it. In the town called Muhammad, Illinois. And there's reports that Abraham Lincoln spent the night in this town. Uh, this is the administrative building, which you see called the village of Muhammad, one of the grocery stores, Muhammad, public library. And in that town, we saw a tombstone with the Tahid on it, with the one finger on it, belief in one God, Muslim belief in one God. So this was the strongest symbol that the Muslims at that time could say, that there's one God, we believe in this one God, no matter what name you change this to, no matter what has happened to it, we still believe that concept of the one God. Now this other town, uh, this Muhammad, Texas, we said we were not um, cowboys, we were camel boys. Here's another proof of it. In this town called Muhammad, Texas, in Gun Ho, Texas, in 1850. We had a post office from 1857 to 1916 led by August Muhammad, uh, who was the postmaster in 1879. And then, then this Muhammad, um, he was part of the, the 75 camel herders. Uh, the, uh, the three camel herders that worked on it uh, with the 75 camels. And one of the guys that grew up in Muhammad, Illinois, was traveling and saw that there was a town called Muhammad. And he went to investigate. So, yes, we've been part of the American family. Here you got another town. Um, I think they call it my main main and Medina. I'm not sure how they pronounce it. I know they don't say Medina uh, in Ohio. Um, um, well, I, I can't even think of how they pronounce it, but it was Medina. And before that, it was called, it was originally called Mecca. But they went back to Medina, so they consciously changed, put these names as an Islamic name for these towns. And, and all throughout the United States, you see towns with Islamic names. You got 29 towns with the name Lebanon, 19 Cairo, 17 Egypt, 13 Jordan, 12 Medina, 12 Palestine, 12 Damascus, 8 Mecca. Seven Mena. Mena is the, one of the small towns in between Mecca and Medina as part of the Hajj that somebody got to know something about Islam in order to be, have that. Alhamdulillah. And these are some of the names that they gave him Andalusia. Here you got a Kurla, you got Turkey, you got Muhammad, Sultan, Sudan. Sudan is spelled two different ways. These are towns all throughout the United States. Here you got some, uh, you got one with the name Allah, one with the name Africa, Africa Historical, Arab, Babylon, Darfur, Dahome, 
is El Qadir. It's named after a famous uh, Muslim from Lebanon uh, 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 that saves, well, we thank the Muslim from Algiers who, 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 who saves some Muslims in Lebanon, Christians in Lebanon. You know, and I watched the cowboy picture, Gunsmoke. Um, it shows a couple episodes talking about El Qadir, this time El Qadir. You got Ishmael, Islam Aroda, Islam Bird, Muhammad, Ba Muhammad D, Mesopotamia, Morocco, New Medina, Muslim from the following now, what did Muhammad uh, help establish that time? Now we're going to turn that to turn to the 20th century. A lot of subtle things happen at the turn of the century that people just don't know, I'm not aware of. And these are a lot of uh, information that you can find in the census records. In 1906, there was a brother named Osman Muhammad, who was 18 years old, came from Turkey, lived in the United States. Osman lived with a brother named Ali Muhammad. He was 40 years old. And this was in the 1870s. They lived with 12 other Muslims from Turkey in War Three, the province of Rhode Island. So they lived in groups. Uh, and you see in many of the census records, you see men uh, uh, in groups. You see him out in Oregon. You got this Hassan Ali Adin, born in Turkey. You know, uh, 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 and you can see this wave, this pre-World War I wave, or this late 1880s. Uh, we found wills in Washington, D.C. that begin with, in the name of God, Aini, or Bismillah, Aini. And you got Muhammad Asad Abu Hawa, who was the brother that uh, designed and developed uh, the Islamic Center in the 1850s, coming over here. You had the World's Fair in, the eight, in 1904, which introduced Islamic design architect, mass digs, and other things within the, uh, ex, in the, in, in the exposition. It was granted uh, a, a land deed in 1905, was granted to Muhammad uh, Mahmoud uh, Ali. The Polish Tartars, started the American Mohammedan Society in 1907. You had Alexander Russell Webb, who was a, who was a, a first European Muslim American, who was a journalist and a diplomat uh, at the turn of the century, became very uh, well known and, and popular. And at the World's Fair, he gave a lecture uh, about the unity of the religion of Islam. Here you have some of the original members of the Mohammedan, American Mohammedan Society. These are some of your Polish Tartars who helped establish this Polish community in the Brooklyn area of New York uh, and their stories. Uh, this is out of 1917, it's 1907. This is an early wave. Now, one of the most uh, popular Polish Tartar is Charles Bronson. Uh, he is a descendant of the Polish Tartars. This here, is uh, immigrant uh, immigration records uh, of a brother named Muhammad Khan. Uh, him and his wife, uh, Maria Khan. Uh, and with them, they came here uh, in 1911. And he got his citizenship in 1913. This is in Portland, Oregon. This is way out, way out. That buddy came from Afghanistan. You got other Muslim immigration coming in and mixing all around from the uh, Turkish Empire. Um, these are more, more Muslims in 1812 uh, coming in. And, and, and then the, 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 uh, also these are census records of the of 1900. Now what I, I did because and, and we started out earlier talking about the Asiatic, well, in, 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 in the more science temple, the nation is so on, and uh, the Sunni Muslims under Ahmad or uh, Azadeen all identified or tied themselves as Asiatic Black or Asiatic. Um, so in some of the census records, uh, I, I started looking at people that described themselves as uh, Asiatic. And I had to stop, I think it was in 1910, one of them, there was thousands, 50,000 different people. So some, that just was a lot of Hawaiians and some Turkish people. But in the 1900s in Michigan, there was 55 people that say they was Asiatic. Khalil Mawu, which is probably Mahmoud, John Mugar, uh, Mervyn Mawu, which is probably Mahdu. Uh, and they said they come from Asia, Turkey. And this is just five of them. And in 1908, you know, you, you start seeing them coming in. Then in the African American community, uh, uh, 
you started with the concept of amongst the more science community. Noble Drew Ali and a few others uh, started an uh, organization uh, with Islamic ideas, Islamic concepts, as well as hermetic ideas and hermetic concepts. And in 1915, you got the Albanians coming in in, in Bridgeport, Maine. And I showed you some of those early tombstones. Uh, he died, one died in 1906, so you know they was here before this 1915. And they had to help establish a, a, a masjid in, one, in Pepper's Mills Farm who helped make bread and, and, and pastry, things like that. This is uh, Noble Jali and his tombstone. Uh, Noble Jali had established temples. One unique thing about the temple, he had one out in Charleston, West Virginia, uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Lanston, and in Detroit, Michigan, and Philadelphia, and Pittsburgh, Pine Bluff. New, New Jersey, Cleveland, and Youngstown. Um, and you see this Cleveland, Youngstown, uh, Toledo, uh, not only with Noble Draw Lee, the Mission Islam, Dar Islam, uh, and Islamic Party, it, 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 it plays a, 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 a pivot role, as well as Akhandines, as well as Milwaukee. You know, you start seeing different regions uh, uh, of Islam penetrating the area uh, by and with generations and different groups. So these are some of the more, the more science temple uh, of your brothers and sisters. And they were treated different than the other African-American uh, during that period of time. They was not subjected to such as some of the Jim Crow laws as many African-Americans were. During World War I, um, used only 118 different Muslim last names. We found listed at least 5,470 soldiers that had an Islamic last name in the U.S. War record, draft, and enlistment records. There was 41 different spellings of the last name Muhammad in the U.S. World War I enlistment record, draft, and rescue. With more than 550 people who had the last name Muhammad, it was spelled uh, 41 different ways. There was three most popular ways was this M-U-H-A-M-M-A-D. Um, and there was Muhammad um, O-H-A-E-D with 180. Um, next was Muhammad 118. This is more of a Turkish spell. And Muhammad M-O-H-A-M-M-E-D 69 on different ways. The most popular last name was Hassan. The 723 people had the last name Hassan with an A. Hassan with an O, 48, 448 people. Now this here um, is the tombstone of Sultan Muhammad. He was the first national representative of Elijah Muhammad when Elijah Muhammad got arrested in the DC area. He came to check on Elijah Muhammad. Uh, Milwaukee, the masjid in Milwaukee is named after him. Um, he was a once a World War I veteran. This is his tombstone with a crescent in it. And he's buried in Arlington Cemetery. And we know him as Sultan Muhammad. Now the Muhammad's great-grandson and grandson uh, has his name, Sultan. At the, by the 1920s, there was 14 people had their last name Allah. And they came from places like Turkey, Hungary, and India, and Greece, and Syria. So you see looking at Hungary. Um, people that had Islamic names coming out of it. 57 people had the last name Abdul. They were born in places like Arabia, Isis, Turkey, India, Syria, Arab Republic, Constantinople, uh, Syria, East India, uh, Egypt, Germany, England, Poland, Hawaii, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, Colorado, and New York, where, where they came from and were born in. So some of the Generation born in, the, in America and some wasn't. Um, there was 15 people had the last name Ahmed. Uh, 70 people with the last name Ahmed with an E. And they were born in places all around that you see. And you see that there was also uh, was a wave of a Muslim that came out of Bulgaria. Now this here is a census record in the 1920 of a Muslim woman whose name is uh, Mary Berry. But she described herself as a Moor. She was, her birth, she was born in Arkansas. She was home in Arkansas, living in Arkansas. But she's saying that she was a Moor. The first Ahmadiyya Muslim missionary was brought here 
of Mufti Muhammad Sadiq. The Red Crescent was developed in the 1920s. Many other Islamic associations was um, being developed. Another unique thing I found in the, in the 1920s was this brother Hassan Muhammad. He became a successful businessman in downtown Biloxi, Mississippi. Biloxi, Mississippi, that's where he did. Uh, he had a general merchandise store. I saw him sell in Biloxi area in the 1911. Uh, he became he came from Lebanon, a Shiite village in Syria. Uh, Hassan was married to Ethel Wright. Together they had eight children. One of their sons, Ali Muhammad, became a state senator. Hassan Muhammad passed away in, in 1965. This is the, a photograph of uh, Mufti Muhammad Siddiqui, some of the early members of the Ahmed Deans and the, the national uh, headquarters here in the um, Maryland, D.C. area. This here was one of the first masjids built up from the ground up in 1921, right not far from the Ford's plant. Uh, it was knocked down in 1926. The unique thing about this one, it was the diversity of it. Um, he was Shiite and uh, Lebanese and uh, regular Muslim that helped build this. And it was an Ahmed Dean that helped dedicate the prayer to it. So at this time, the Muslims, we were not divided. We were diverse, and we saw our diversity in it. Uh, this was knocked down in 1926. Another uh, unique uh, personality at that period is Sati Majid Muhammad al Qadi. Uh, he was born in uh, Dangola, Sudan. Uh, in 1873, he passed in, in the 1900s, in the 1963, uh, uh, in the 60s. Unique thing, uh, there's many stories about Muhammad Sadiq. You know, he in, in New York, in, in the 27th, he helped establish the Muslim Unity Association. Uh, he was the president of the African Muslim Welfare Society of America Incorporated in 1928 under his leadership in Pittsburgh. Here you find uh, many different articles uh, in the 1920s uh, about Sadiq, uh, Sadiqi. One thing uh, in, in, in one of the articles about Sadiq that I found very, very unique is that he describes that he had at least 100,000 people that he identified as Muslims, that the United Muslim Society, a national association with headquarters here, has support of at least 100,000 Egyptians, Turks, Syrians, and other the, uh, people of the Muslim faith all throughout the states. And Moss has already been built in Detroit, and another in Worcester, Massachusetts. And he has personally made more than 1,000 converts to the faith of his forefathers in the United States. So he described his, his uh, being the, the imam of the immigrant community and, and at least 100,000 his followers, and he identified at least 1,000 uh, 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 of them that he converted. Now, here, these are some of the early masjids. This is a 21, knocked down in 26. This one was done in Ross, North Dakota in 1929. This one is really the oldest masjid standing in the United States. It was first a house, but because it's under the Akandian community, they, people don't look at it uh, as, a, as a, being part of masjid, but they did reopen it up and rebuild it. But this one was established in 1922 after that first one. Now, this is one of the events at that masjid, the first masjid. Here you got Muhammad Dusi Ali, who was a famous diplomat, journalist, a scholar. Uh, with Muhammad Dusi Ali, you, with, uh, Marcus Garvey had the, the, the idea one God, one aim, one purpose, uh, came from Dusi Ali. Uh, when he worked with, uh, 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 when Marcus Garvey worked with him, uh, gave him these ideas, these concepts. Uh, and this is where you see Muhammad Duseli joining him in at that prayer service. And we move to the 1930s, 1950s. In the 1930s, there were at least six people that had the last name Bilal. Three were born in Alabama and three were born in Colorado, Albania, and Minnesota. So you only had one immigrant uh, with the name Bilal. The rest was born, homegrown in the 1930s, born with the name Bilal. There were seven people with the last name Hodge. Six of them were born in Syria. And one was born in New York. 
Uh, there was 10 people that had the last name Akbar. 79 people with the last name Salim. 215 people with the last name Salim, S-A-L-I-M. 58 people had the last name Adula. So now we're starting to see the increasing of Muslim names in, in the census records, spelled in many different uh, formats. In the 1930s and, and all across the United States, like in Nebraska, you can see all the different names in, in the early period. These Muhammads. You see them coming all around and you, you see uh, very richly in the census. Now, these are census records of Muslims that we took a look at in the, 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 the uh, Detroit area in the 1930s. This is a Ali Muhammad from Arabia living in Detroit, Salina Street. And here you got all the different Muslims living in. This is just one page of them. Ahmed Omar Talib, Ali Sali, Ali Ernest, uh, Marsh, Mamnish Hassan, you know, uh, and, and there's another sheet uh, of them. Now here, here you got this U Umar uh, Muhammad. Then they put an S on it, uh, and it could be Omar Muhammad. And as a female, it could be Umi. As a female, born in Georgia, living in Detroit on Brady Street. Her husband's name is Abdullah Bay. And these are the children. You see Aisha, Maryam, Fatima, Ishmael. And here you got one Confucius Muhammad. This is in, eight, eight, in 1930. Then you got in the 1930s census with people with the name Ali and, uh, and Shabazz. Here you got Mary Drew Ali. Mary Drew Ali, I wonder if you got this Drew Ali. But she was born in Texas. She's a widow. Saying she's a widow and then Drew Ali already had passed. Um, she was living in Chicago. And her name was Mary Drew Ali. And there was a Joseph Price Bay. The bay we know is, 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 is names that the Muslims of uh, Morris Science Temple use. Bay and Ill. There's another census records in the 1930s. These are people that at least 69 people had the last name Shabazz. These came from Turkey, Persia, New York, homegrown New York, Poland. People come with Poland with the name Shabazz, Persia. These are people with that name Shabazz. In Detroit, the Nation of Islam was established, which was first called the Lost Foundation of Islam in the Wilderness of North America, founded by Farad Muhammad. By 1934, uh, that leadership passed down to Elijah Muhammad, and he took it into a different direction. The Muslims then see the rapids. In 1934, they established their first masjid. We showed the purchase, uh, a picture of that before. And then also in the 34 is the first mass masjid or mosque of Cleveland, which is uh, established by Muslims of African American descent. First, it was a, they were Ahmadines, but then they be, uh, they made that transition uh, from the Ahmadines into Sunni Islam, and that was under the leadership of Wali Akram, uh, African American Muslim brothers. This is in the 1934s. Uh, also, you had coming back in the 1930s, and we'll come to it soon. Is a, a, a professor as a dean. Now, these are since marriage records. Of, this is a Alex Hassan. Uh, matter of fact, this this one unique about this record. This is the uh, daughter of Elijah Muhammad's oldest brother, Wali Muhammad, Essie Muhammad. She married a guy. Uh, do you see his name, Willie Muhammad, which was, and his her mother was A.D. Luster. Her, her spouse is Alexander, is Alex Hassan. And this is their record, their marriage record. So they had that name Hassan and Muhammad legally in the 1930s. So they probably got a little bit before that. Now you have Muhammad, uh, Professor al uh, which started the first Sunni uh, uh, Muslim organization. He was part of what they call the Morris Science Temple. He left there uh, and, and fled to Turkey. 
things did not work for him as, as well as he desired from Turkey. Um, he wound up going into Egypt, uh, uh, going to Alzair, uh, uh school, and coming a, a scholar, coming educated, and coming back teaching Islam, Sunni Islam, uh, under his leadership. There was a, a booklet that he, he established, the, uh, the Dinu Allah Universal Arab Association, telling their stories um, where they were established. Uh, he found the organization in 1938 um, and, and then in different locations. We just most recently learned that they also uh, purchased over 20, 25 acres of land upstate New York um, in the Buffalo area. Uh, as well as the southern part of uh, uh, New Jersey, closer to Camden. Um, this is one of the early letters that was written in the 1930s from his office. Uh, this is one, the, this is the masjid in the, the, that area. This is Ezzedine Village Drive. There's one of the streets is called Cedar Drive, Cedar Street. This here, is the masjid, this is the oldest standing masjid in the United States today, it's the Cedar Rapids masjid. It's called, known as the Mother's Mosque. These are some of the youth that were going through a Quranic contest in the 1930s. This is them in the 1930s in the Greek group meeting and photos. Now this here is that, and in the 1930s, uh, when Farah Muhammad got arrested in, in the uh, Detroit area, uh, uh, the, the police questioned him. Um, in here, and this will be the FBI uh, photograph of him questioning and what he's teaching out of. Now they got all the radio, all the temples, they got all the documents, the, the, the problem book, all the lessons, all documents they, they got from the early beginning, since the, the beginning of the nation's life. That they all they always knew. Um, here and, and rested him when they rested him during this point, they waited for immigration to come. So this shows you that he was an immigrant. Now here they say that he came from uh, Afghanistan. Okay, there's questions about where he really actually came from, but it shows you he came, he was an immigrant. Uh when when this event happened. This here, if you go look up uh, reports about the nation Islam uh, in the Detroit area, they call the voodoo cult. The story about this brother named Robert Harris, uh, who wanted to believe in blood sacrifice, was going around trying to kill people, bring that thing in there, was going to bring them uh, closer to a law. Uh, and it happened in his house on DeBar Street. Now, over here, these are uh, records. Uh, 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 city directors are saying and showing where Elijah Muhammad lived at different periods. Like in 1927, like in the 1920s, you can't find it. I haven't been able to find Elijah Muhammad in the census records. 1900, 1910, 1930, 40, you can, but the 1920s, I haven't to date been able to. These, these are the closest records. So in 1927, he was living in Detroit on Rockwood Avenue in Detroit. Um, with his wife Claire, and in Detroit, uh, and in 1928, he lived at 3734 DeBoss Street. This is the house on DeBoss Street. This is in the 1900 block, a couple thousand blocks away, but this, this is the same street. And there's one record I've seen that Elijah Muhammad lived on, father lived on DeBoss Street as well. Now this is the 1930 where they lived at uh, 28 Inland. Now, during that event and then that protest, and it was called Allah's Temple of Islam, which later became the name of the Nation of Islam. These are some of them being arrested and some of the protests. Here you see Hoover and them marching into court. Here's a, a, a brother named Ali, Allah Shah, been hurt in, in, in police custody. These are photographs of the sisters in the 30s protesting the brothers being arrested. You know, they were coming to check on their men. You know, uh, uh, they stood up in what they believed. And you see how they dressed in their Islamic garb. This is in the 1930s. They came to defend their men. And then respect them. And this is uh, Women History Month. So they honor and respect for them. Um, Elijah Muhammad was the, uh, the leader of the nation of Islam at that time. Matter of fact, this is a newspaper article 
when they say that they accuse them of sedition. Here's a picture of Elijah Muhammad. Here's Sister Pahar. Bahar. This is Brother Charles Newby, uh, known as uh, Father Divine. Uh, here is, is, uh, is Lynn Kareem, Brother Lynn Kareem. Here's another Brother David, David Logan. These are some of the famous personalities that were known in the African American community um, during that time. Now, this here is Elijah Muhammad's census records. In the 1930s, known as Elijah Poole, living in Detroit, as we said, and Leland is, is the street, which we know was 28. Here's Elijah with Claire and a couple of his children. And this is Edna, uh, Ethel Lottie, and Nathaniel. Uh, here's Elijah Muhammad's uh, draft records. Then you know, date when he was born and what year. And you see the, the dispute. Uh, uh, this is his social security record. This one says October 17th, 19. 1897, and you see his father's name is Wally, his mother named Marie. Uh, this one is a, a date October 10th, 1899. So there's some discrepancy there. Here, these are newspaper articles out the 30s. Here it's talking about these Mohammedans living in the city and led by Dr. Abdul Suleiman, a native of Arabia, and started to drive the wind Negroes of their uh, Mohammedan um, faith by stressing the fact that there are absolute equality of races and genuine brotherhood un under Mohammedanism, uh, and opposed to Christianity. I'm talking about the mass being opened soon. This is in the 1930s. Here you're talking about another one, 1936. Brothers on the street talking. Here they talk about on soapboxes. Okay, on, on, on Lenox Avenue, nationalist organization with roots to back to Bacchus Garvey. And he's talking about Sufi Abdul Hamid. When they use the word, and they use the word Sufi. Now he got a Saeed Akmal in the 1940. Uh, his wife Amina, son of Rasul, daughter Hadiya, uh, Burhan and Farouk, Halima. These are his children. And this is in Pennsylvania. In 1940. This brother from South Carolina, but living in Pennsylvania. Nathaniel Muhammad, and this is not Elijah Muhammad's son. This guy was born in 1901. He was almost Elijah Muhammad's age. His name was Nathaniel Muhammad. Willa, his wife's name was Willa Muhammad, son William, and he had a Donald Muhammad. They lived in Chicago. This is in the 1940s. Even more in the 1940s in, 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 in the Detroit area. Um, you had at least 11 people that said that there was Asiatic. This is where it says Asiatic. You got at least 11 of them. There's Willie Muhammad from Alabama. There's Archie Parry, South Carolina. There's Gregory, there's Parks, Calendor, Al Muhammad. At least 11 people that had been, that said that they were uh, Asiatic, living in Detroit. Also in Detroit, there was 36 of them, probably in Illinois. There was 36 people who said that there was Moors, listed themselves as Moors. You see some of the bays, you see some of the ills, the ills, but they listed, there was 36 of them that listed themselves as, as, as Moors. This is in the 1940s. In the 1940 census, you got another sister, Della Sharif, uh, saying she's Asiatic. She was born in uh, Merlin. But living in Detroit, saying she's Asiatic. Her husband's name was Muhammad Sharif. And the other children were named Greg, or people that lived with them. Here in Michigan, once again, you got 11 people saying that they're Asiatic. Adam Baif, Willie Muhammad Calendar. These are people that are saying that they're Asiatic. Either came through the Moorish sign symbol, but they got the name Muhammad, so this would be the nation of Islam. And now Elijah Muhammad got the name Muhammad. Now W.D. Muhammad pointed out and he was 42 years old. His name was M-O-H-A-M-M-E-D. W.D. Muhammad was right and he said he was a religious teacher. And here's all his children, Emmanuel, Ethel, Lottie, Nathaniel, Herbert, which is called Huber, Herbert, Elijah, Jr., Wallace D. Muhammad, Akbar Muhammad. 
this is his record, and WD pointed out his father's name. They spelled the M O H A M M E D, and you can see it. In 1942, you had a, a John Ben Ali Higgins. Came, he was known as a captain, uh, Captain Johnny Higgins, who was famous, uh, came famous as a, a fighter pilot who knocked down uh, a submarine um, during one of the, the, the wars, during the, uh, uh, Pearl Harbor. Uh, event. In 1942, the nation Islam when the brothers got arrested, Brother Benjamin and Brother William Fagan and the others, uh, they started bringing Islam to him. They started bringing in books. Uh, uh, Clara Muhammad started sneaking in letters uh, with, with surahs of the Quran in. So it was the nation Islam that started uh, introducing Islam in the prison system back in the 1942. The first mosque uh, in 1945 and the first mosque of Pittsburgh was established. These are brothers found the Sunnah. In 1946, the first Young uh, Muslim Women Association was chartered in Pittsburgh. And um, once again, you see that Pittsburgh, Youngtown area, a uh, uh, growth of Islam. In 1949, the, uh, the Auckland Dean established the Muslim Center. Once again, coming back to Imam Wali Akram. Who helped establish Islam uh, in that Pittsburgh area? Uh, in '37, he broke away from the uh, Auckland Deans to to put more focus on African American Muslims and their concerns and issues. And he also what he established was a ten-year economic pro um, program. Imam Wali Akram was also one of the early ones to um, go on Hajj, make Hajj. He worked with uh, 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 Muslim associations uh, uh, in the 1940s. This is one of the uh, photographs of the um, different Muslim organizations coming together. This is in 1943. Uh, here you got at least, it says four organizations uh, of our Islam, namely the uh, Muslim 10-year plan, Muslims of America, Academy of Islam, and the Ahmadiyya, uh, pardon me, Adil Unu, Allahi Universal Arab Association. They made up this group that brought people together in the 1943. So you have Muhammad as a dean. You have uh, Wali Akram, um, Sheikh Daoud, and many others coming together to talk about the Sunni Islam. Here you got in State Street, Sheikh Daoud. From Sheikh Daoud came what we know today as Dar Islam, the community of Dar Islam. Came out of um, Sheikh Daoud's community uh, by the late 18, 1960s, early 70s. I do want to say something unique about this brother, uh, Al Haj Ishmael Sampson. Uh, he was a pioneer of Islam in Detroit. In 1947, uh, he founded what they call the Universal Muslim Brotherhood of Al Islam. He used the term Al Islam in the 1940s uh, during his visit to Mecca. And he made Hajj uh, by the 1940s. In the 1950s, uh, 70, he, found, he founded the Hajj Samson Abdul Masjid Islamic Mission located in uh, 1554 Virginia Avenue. Uh, uh, Virginia Park Department. And this is him now. And this is one of the books that he did. So he didn't find himself that he made hot in, in October 31st, 1947. And this is in Detroit area. But yeah, he also described himself being part of the tribe of Shema. And you got Sheikh Nafia Mukmain. Now, some of his descendants in, in, in Philadelphia are still today. Uh, 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 um, the Kuba Masjid. And these are some of the old, uh, which, which again, Manas Ahmed, uh, some of the early fathers of, of Muhammad Professor as a dean, uh, which had branched out. The Ackman Dean Muslim and their community established, you know, a massive headquarters in Harperwood, um, Michigan. There's that tombstone we said the Kasim Sali Bilalski. You see that name Bilal. Here you got Ali Muhammad. He died in 1917. This is uh, in, in tombstone we found in Maine. This is over 105 years ago that we've been here. 
And then by the 1940s, 50s started seeing Muslim jazz artists. Uh, Art Blakely, Talib Daoud, Muhammad Sadi, Sahib uh, Shahed, Ahmed Jamal, many of them. The master, uh, uh, the first mosque in the nation's capital was established. American Faisal Masjid on, on Leeward Place. Uh, uh, Muslim in 1952, Muslims um, sued the government uh, uh, for the service to recognize them as being Muslims. Other organizations was established. Malcolm Z uh, in 1966 become a member of the Nation of Islam. Another uh, highly uh, popular Muslim uh, that many of us have forgotten about is Len Hope. Uh, he was a Muslim uh, who, who made Hajj in the 50s. Uh, he was an artist. Uh, a jazz artist uh, who was part of the Ahmadine, uh, not the Ahmadine, but the Lahoudin community under the leadership of Mom uh, Esso Dean and in Philadelphia. These are some of the brothers in the 50s and the 60s. Here's just letting you know that he made Hodge in 52. This is him in 58. This is your jazz artist, Lynn Hope. Now, Shahid Shihab, he's the first known Muslim artist to change his name. He comes up out of Savannah, Georgia. He was a horn player. Of course, there was no Pharaoh Saunders. Your Art Blakely, Yusuf Abdul Latif, Ahmed Jamal, Idris Muhammad. There's many Muslim uh, artists, jazz artists, uh, R&B artists, rap artists, spoken word artists that contribute to the, the, the fabric of uh, wholesomeness of America. Now these two are more two marriage records. This is a Leroy uh, Henderson. He said that he's Asiatic. He was born in, 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 in North Carolina. He said he's Asiatic. So he's coming out of that, the Moorish the nation stop right the years. Here you got an Omar Ali Shabazz, Asiatic Black. He was born in Memphis, Tennessee. So they're using these terms, Asiatic. In 1950, you got the Hamas, Hamas, Khalis, who started the Islamic organization in the, the uh, DC area. He uh, spread away from the nation of Islam. You had Master Muhammad, who's known today as the nation's mosque. Uh, uh, was built and opened and dedicated in December 1960. Uh, the brother uh, Najib Halabi was appointed by the head of the federal administration by President uh, John F. Kennedy in 61. Muhammad speak newspapers started being published in 1962. Dar Islam community was established. In 1957, you have the brother Muhammad uh, who helped is, is the, with the design and the building of the Islamic Center, which still exists today. And President Eisenhower visited the center. You see the feet of uh, Israel. And from the 1960s to 1980s, and we're going to come to closing. So these are the newspaper. This is the first newspaper. And it was called Islamic News. Then it moved, and this was in July 59. Then it moved to Muhammad Speaks. This is the first Muhammad Speaks newspaper. Then you got the 60s, Imam Hisham Jabber, who took over from um, the leadership of Imam uh, Ezzedine, Professor Ezzedine. Uh, Imam Hisham Jabber is the brother that buried Malcolm X. He's the brother that uh, gave uh, Amir Bakira, uh, the famous poet. Uh, his name, uh, Imam Hisham Jabba was very ins instrumental and very influential in the, uh, in, in the 60s and early 70s. Here you got Sheikh Daoud meeting with Malcolm again. Malcolm come engaged in the international event, uh, talking about human rights, human dignity, but also putting focus uh, uh, on Islam. This is uh, his friend, Ma Malcolm and Muhammad Ali, Malcolm and, and Martin Luther King, and a poster stamp that they did to honor Malcolm as an American hero. Malcolm is not only an American hero, but he's a world hero. 
Uh, same thing with Muhammad, Muhammad Ali. These two personalities are world heroes. They have inspired people from all around the world for self-dignity, humanness, uh, freedom, justice, and equality. You, um, you see that they used to hate Muhammad Ali, um, but now they love him and admire him. They put him on the weedy box. You see that during these Black Lives Matter, many of the sports first personalities and figures, they use Muhammad Ali example as a model to measure, measure themselves and their actions and their commitment and what they could do. Here you got Muhammad Ali carrying the Olympic torch, uh, guiding us to human dignity, human call. He did not give up uh, on his support or belief in, in, in Elijah Muhammad, knowing on loving Allah and believing in Allah. The Nation of Islam uh, was an organization that brought brotherhood in, into the uh, urban areas, into the community. A sense of God, a sense of cleansiness, a sense of cohesiveness, a sense of self of reliance of doing for self. They created jobs. They imported tons, metric tons of fish from Peru overseas to uh, distribute amongst the inner cities. They're the ones that sold fish with the hats off. That's what YDHMG came in with. Hats off, hats and guts off, clean, ready to go, ready to cook. They produced eggs from their farms. They uh, produced that bean pot. That bean pot is still famous today. Uh, and they brought sardines. And uh, from Morocco, they had the newspaper. Now, this here is the first temple that they had in the Detroit area. I mean, pardon me, in the Philadelphia area. This is where Malcolm taught at when they had the uh, temple. This is the temple that he taught at. This is the temple that he, where W.D. Muhammad was the minister at in the 60s in the, in the, New, uh, in the uh, Philadelphia area. This here is another early Philadelphia mass theater temple. Here you see it says Muhammad. It says African Asian Culture Center. And here you see Muhammad. And here you got Muhammad's freedom or death. Here you got the Arabic with the with the crescent. And this is on Columbia Avenue in the early 60s. Here you got the leader, uh, Imam Yahya Abdul Kalim, one of the leaders of the Islamic uh, the Dar movement. Uh, a, 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 a indigenous community, a, a Sunni Muslim that came up out of what they, uh, what we know as the State Street Mass Theater. Here you have uh, Shirley Chisholm, the first um, uh, African American woman to run for president. Uh, and within the Dar in the early '80s, they elected uh, Imam Jamil al as a as a leader for, uh, uh, for the community and for a leader representing the Muslim community in the United States. And, and you had other Muslim organization groups come about in the 60s, the Hanif movement, the Islamic Circle of North America, ICMAN we know it today. Um, Dr. Uh, Faisal Rahman Khan uh, from Bangladesh, he designed what we call the Chicago Hancock Building, and the one sh uh, Shell Plaza in, in, in Houston, as well as the Sears Tower in, in Chicago. So uh, designed these different buildings. The Islamic party was established uh, under uh, use of Muhafiz Dean. In the 1971, in the uh, uh, DC area, and it became a, a national organization. This is uh, Imam Nafir Mahadeen and Imam Ab Abu Bakr. They, they, they are in, uh, Abu Bakr is in his master in, in West Philly on Cumberland Street. This is in the 1973. This is Dar es Salaam Masjid, Mahideen Masjid. This is in the 70s, brothers go inside the Masjid for Salah. In 74, Muslim World League granted, now was granted non governmental organization status at the United Nations. Elijah Muhammad passed and the transition uh, move from the nation of Islam to following the leadership of Imam Wati Muhammad and Imam Wati Muhammad making the changes to the community, having the community coming to follow the Sunni Islam, a pure Islam. In 1978, Imam Wati Muhammad was named as a consultant and trustee by the Gulf States to distribute funds for the Islamic missionary and activities in the United States who was given that responsibility, that leadership 
then we didn't bend down to their wishes and their demand. They took that leadership away from them, that finance away from it, and moved it to other places. Um, in 1981, you, uh, in 1970, you had the Phoenix Masjid, which was established in, in Tempe. The first Islamic library was established in, in, in Plainfield, Indiana. Here in the 1940s, one showed Imam Wardi Muhammad's census records. You see him being uh, born with spoke the name M O H A M M E D. And, and Elijah Muhammad and his descendants, uh, Imam Wardi Muhammad and his mother as a child. And under that new leadership, uh, he, he, Muhammad, Wardi Muhammad gave him that Quran, gave him that guidance. He gave him the understanding of remaking the world, the necessity to remake the world, to remake a change. Um, at the beginning, uh, it was suggested that the nation of Islam should be divided into three. Uh, Methania having a portion of it, Wallace having a portion of it, and uh, Herbert having a portion of it. Um, Imam Wardi Muhammad uh, went to the news, people made the announcement that he was chosen the leadership so that it was not a divided leadership, but a single leadership. And then within that single leadership, he a decentralized organization. And if you look at some of the uh, status and the growth of the organization, uh, within the first five years, it saw 104% growth in, in people. The community grew from 81 places of worship or temples in 1975 to 165 mass masses. In 19, by 1998, this is within five years. Um, and then the community in 1979, it changed its name from temples to masjids. Uh, it increased to, uh, 83, it went from 83 temples to 149 masjids. So when they made that change, you saw that big growth. And then it was some steady growth after that. By 1982, the community under the leadership of Muhammad, 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 Muhammad grew to 208 massages, which, which is another 26% increase within two years. Uh, uh, at the time of his passing, Mount Wadi Muhammad became known as a world now renowned leader. And it also became known as America's Imam. He led the largest Muslim Sunni organization within the United States. Um, these are just some of the statistics of the growth. You can see based upon the, the information out of the uh, nation's farm uh, records and the temples. So I don't have a clear picture of how, how many temples uh, existed from 42 to uh, 64. But in 1942, Elijah Muhammad told the uh, FBI or the police that he had nine temples. Um, three of them had numbers at the time, but he identified nine of them. But from 64 to 65, the years of Malcolm, um, leaving the temples, there was 26 of them. So from 66 to uh, 74, four, you had a growth from 41 temples, a 58% increase over those years on the leadership of Farcom. The temples, the nation's arm steady growing. So it grew from 26 temples. Uh, within 10 years, 74, it had 77 temples. 71 had numbers um, which showed a 23% a growth. And then from 75, the years of Mom Wardi Muhammad leadership, you see the astronomical uh, growth, increase in the growth of the temple in the community. So this is just more um, census records uh, that you see the growth. You also see on the Mahmoudi Muhammad um, leadership, the ideas when you go to the Costco's or these walls or these big warehouse stores, he came up with this idea a long time ago about ANCOP, um, bringing plenty of um, resources together to buy uh, products uh, at a cheaper price to sell at a wholesale price to a consumer. We did not follow through with that thought and we see that today. He gave us the, the idea of interfaith relationship development interfaith relationship. Uh, he gave us also in, in the business market, the idea of shea butter. Before you introduced shea butter to the market, shea butter was not in the American market. Now shea butter is everywhere. Um, he introduced also to the market, the idea of al not Islam, but al -Islam. You also brought back to the consciousness 
the terminology of uh, not using the word moss, which means a, a, a place for mosquitoes, um, but he used the word masjid. I put emphasis on using the word masjid, a uh, place where you make sex, a place where you bow. So as we move towards closing, in the 1900s, 1920s, we find a lot of firsts. Uh, the first Muslim judge, Adam Shakur, uh, in 1981, became a judge. The International Institute of Islamic Thought was developed. Islam was established in Plainfield in 1982. Imam Hudim Hamadi centralized the nation of Islam, organizational structure. If, uh, a Somalian born Muslim invented and developed that US stamp that we saw, the self adhesive stamp. It was a Muslim that created that, that self adhesive stamp. And prior to that, we was looking to stand. Imam Shiraz Wahad became the first Muslim to open up the U.S. Um, Capitol or U.S. Representative Congress in, in prayer uh, under his leadership. In 1941, Charles Delau became the first Muslim mayor in Paluxy, Texas, believe it or not. 1992, Muhammad Wadi Muhammad became the first Muslim to open up the Senate in prayer. 1993, the first Muslim chaplain of uh, army, uh, Abdul Rashid, became the first Muslim chaplain of the army. In 1993, the first Muslim judge was a uh, member of Judge Shula Abdul Salam. Uh, a few years ago, she was murdered or found dead in, in New York. Uh, she was the first Muslim judge as a woman in 1993. Uh, Imam in 1993, 1997, uh, Imam Wiki Muhammad also in the inaugural prayer uh, at the White House. In 1996, uh, Majid Malik Abdul Mutar Ali Ibn Noel became the first Muslim chaplain in the Navy. Now there's many Muslim chaplains all throughout the Navy. 1997, um, Sakir Mahasan became the first Muslim uh, woman chancellor. Uh, appointed chancellor in, 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 in Merle. In 1998, the first Muslim uh, Ramadan iftar meal was celebrated at the Pentagon. 1999, uh, the first Muslim city police department appoints its first Muslim chaplain, Imam um, Ezekiel Pasha out of New York. Uh, Ahmed Zewal uh, won uh, a Nobel Priest Prize in the 90s. Also in the 1990s, they, they developed and dedicated a, a stamp for uh, Malcolm X, as well as, as, well as designed the uh, first IFTAR stamp in 1999. So you had a lot of firsts. The Muslims in civic uniforms from, from military, Muhammad Chaplin, police commission, Boy Scout, police officers, women police officers, Girl Scouts, uh, police uh, guards. Muslim chaplains. Muslims are part of all American fabric. These are Muslim tombstones for all uh, soldiers that are in Quantico Cemetery, Arlington Cemetery, and, and Veteran Cemeteries all around. We fought in all American wars, all American battles. The first Muslim judge, Judge Adam Shakur. And you have the Muslim judges from females, immigrants, uh, a, a wide range of diversity in judges wide range of Muslim involved in politics. The first ma uh, Muslim mayor, uh, Brother uh, Bilal, Mary Shaw was the uh, longest serving Muslim uh, representative in North Carolina. Um, Keith Ellison was the first Muslim uh, elected to, uh, uh, to Congress. Uh, you got Sister uh, Eliana Omar, Sister Rashida. These are congressmen. You got uh, Congressman Carson. Uh, you have mayors all throughout the United States, uh, Muslim involved and engaged in all aspects of the United States. Uh, Muhammad Ali opened up the door uh, with President Reagan and, and Ford, Bush visiting uh, the Islamic Center, Imam Wardi Muhammad in, in, in the well of the Senate after him opened up the prayer. Here's the first iftar celebration at the uh, Senate building. And then at the White House and at the State Department. Uh, these are some of the first iftars uh, where they open up uh, Muslim uh, 
you know, the government engagement and respecting and acknowledging us as Muslim and being part of the Muslim fabric. These are Muslim engagement in, 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 in the faith program. Imam Budi Muhammad with the Pope, Imam Budi Muhammad with a, a, a Buddhist, other Muslims involved with other um, people of faith, Muslim jazz artists, Muslim R&B artists, poets, Jermaine Jackson, brother uh, Ahmed Erdogan, who started what they call Atlantic Records. Muslims in American sports, from baseball, basketball, fencing, Muhammad Ali, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Hakeem, so many, so many. And there's Muslims in all American, women in American sports from the high school, colleges, everything. Muslims are engaged in American society from American leadership to American engagement. I thank y'all for your time. Thank you for your energy. I, I will open up if there's any questions. If there's no questions, I want to thank y'all for your time. I pray that allow, allow us to grow in wisdom, understanding, and gratitude of his favors, of his blessings, and of his insight. I pray that we grow to understand and appreciate us as Muslims and us being a part of the American fabric. I want to thank you all for your time, understanding. May God bless us, enlighten our heart, enlighten our spirit to faith, wisdom, understanding. I salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.